The Rosenberg Library was founded through the generosity of a Swiss immigrant named Henry Rosenberg, a man who rose from a most humble beginning to become a successful businessman and a beloved civic leader. His vision for a library that would aid Galveston's intellectual development and be a source of pleasure has inspired generations of Islanders to give back to their community. Born in 1824 and built in Switzerland, Henry Rosenberg moved to Galveston at age 19 and began work as a dry goods clerk. Though he had little money, his skill and determination enabled him to become one of the wealthiest men in Texas. He operated one of the largest dry goods companies in the state and held various leadership positions in the community. Mr. Rosenberg was married to Letitia Cooper in 1851, and after her death in 1888, he married Molly Reagan McGill. Henry Rosenberg eventually became president of the Gulf Colorado and Santa Fe Railroad and owner of a bank on the island. Over the course of five decades in Galveston, Rosenberg became one of the most prominent and most generous citizens in the city. He provided funds to build the Rosenberg Free School and to assist with the cost of constructing Eaton Chapel. The people of Galveston were grief-stricken by the news of Mr. Rosenberg's death on May 12, 1893. Public schools let out for the day. The Swiss consulate lowered its flags to half-staff, and many local businesses closed. To the great surprise of the community, Mr. Rosenberg had left the bulk of his sizable estate to numerous charitable causes. In his will, Mr. Rosenberg left gifts for a variety of civic improvements, including an orphan's home, a Texas Heroes Monument, and public drinking fountains for men and beasts. The largest bequest went to create the Rosenberg Library as a successor to the Galveston Mercantile Library, which dated to 1871. An explanation of his wish to establish a public library in the city was given in his last will and testament. I desire to express in a practical form my affection for the city of my adoption and for the people among whom I have lived for so many years, trusting that it will aid their intellectual and moral development and be a source of pleasure and profit to them and their children and their children's children through many generations. The St. Louis firm of Eames and Young designed the building with the cornerstone laid in 1902 and the sparkling new library opening on June 22, 1904. As one of the first public libraries in Texas, the Rosenberg Library was top-notch with a circulating collection, a reference area, and periodicals. From the beginning, the library was more than a repository for books. The top floor originally held an auditorium designed to welcome 700 people for lectures and performances. Although Henry Rosenberg never had children of his own, the library he created offered excellent reading facilities for the island's youth. The children's department was located in what is now the Fox Room. A unique aspect of the Rosenberg Library was the early development of a museum and archival collection related to the history of Galveston in Texas. Today, the library preserves a vast collection of art, artifacts, and historical documents. Among these are relics of the Texas Revolution, a pair of dueling pistols which belong to Sam Houston, historical maps and photographs, and much more. Since 1941, Rosenberg Library has served as the headquarters for the Galveston County Library System, providing outreach services to seniors, nursing homes, schools, daycares, homebound individuals, and hospitals throughout the county. The library has continued to expand its services to the community and has received generous support from the Friends of Rosenberg Library, a dedicated body of community volunteers, as well as from other donors and supporters. Six decades after its opening, the library's board of directors saw the need for more library space. 
not only to store its growing collection of books, but to house meeting rooms, museum galleries, special collections, and an historical research center. In 1967, a campaign was launched, and the new Moody Memorial Wing opened in 1971. As the library prepared for its centennial celebration in 2004, the Board of Directors embarked on a phased renovation of the building, which included a new roof purchased from the same company that provided the roof tiles for the original building, a new skylight, and extensive repairs to the facade of the Rosenberg wing of the building. The next big changes to Rosenberg Library came not as a planned expansion, but courtesy of Hurricane Ike that inundated the island on September 13, 2008. It was the most destructive storm to hit the area since 1900, and its floodwaters completely destroyed the first floor and many of the library's operational systems. As catastrophic as Ike was, the rebuilding effort resulted in a facility that was more energy efficient, had improved interior lighting, and better protected electrical and climate control systems. In the years following the storm, the new children's area opened with upgraded technology to help children learn. The second floor of the Rosenberg Wing received a loving restoration, and the computer lab was expanded to include a new media center. Since 1904, the Rosenberg Library has truly become not only one of the most cherished treasures on the island, but also one of the most utilized. Perhaps just as Henry Rosenberg desired, no other structure has contributed more to Galveston's intellectual and educational progress than this library. One step remains in the process of rebuilding and renovation, however. Phase seven of the library's plan will restore the 1904 Rosenberg Wing's top floor to its original glory. The Rosenberg Wing uh, was completed in 1904 and it was the first major public building in Galveston after the Great Storm. Renovations will uncover architectural details not seen for decades. For example, they put in air conditioning and that uh, damaged the ceilings and we're going to try to bring those back to their original beauty. Well, that's one of the things that we've been focusing in on, on as far as the reconstruction of the building is, is bringing back um, the beauty of the, of the original architecture of the building. They took out a beautiful leaded glass uh, ceiling window and we're going to bring that back. The renovation will create more exhibit space, allowing the library to showcase a greater number of pieces from its collection of art and rare historical artifacts. There have been many changes with um, the way that museum exhibits are designed to incorporate new technologies and this will give us an opportunity to, for the first time in 45 years, create some wonderful displays using audiovisual technologies. We have a wonderful collection of textiles. We've got Mardi Gras gowns from the late 19th century. We've got lots of military uniforms that belong to Galvestonians who were at war. And those collections, because they're difficult to display and to display safely, we have not been able to have out uh, on public view for many years. All of these upgrades that will be coming with the Phase 7 are really going to, going to enable us to highlight the collection the best way possible. Phase 7 will also allow for improved accessibility by bringing all public areas of the building into ADA compliance. The wonderful strides to be found in Phase 7 will not happen on their own, however. As a 501c3 nonprofit, the Rosenberg Library relies upon private contributions. I would say that uh, we're looking for private individuals and foundations have been the major sources of funding for all the previous phases of the work. The public nature of the support has made Rosenberg Library a great place of equal opportunity. Because there is no fee to come in and read books and learn and take advantage of these wonderful historical materials that we have here, it's really been a democratic 
institution and I think that's one of the things that I really enjoy about working here is that there are no limitations on who can come and enjoy the collections here, whether they be books, whether they be archival materials, paintings, it's, it's equal opportunity for all members of the community, for visitors to come and enjoy and that's very rewarding and I know that that is what Mr. Rosenberg's intent was in endowing and establishing the library is that it would be a free and public institution to enhance the community and to better the community. The way we move forward with the development in this library is through the community contributing to these phases of construction. Some cities have bond issues and go out and issue bonds and build buildings, but we don't have the ability to do that in Galveston. And to me, it's a credit to the library here that so many people have contributed directly to the library. We've had some foundation grants, but basically we're doing this on our own with the help of the public. And that's, I think, pretty impressive. It's your time to help. To support Phase 7 and ensure that the Rosenberg Library continues to be one of Galveston's most important and valued institutions, please visit the library website or call the library's administrative offices. <laughs>